Hi my friend, welcome again. In this course, I'm going to teach you the most common fault on a dead motherboard, step by step. So let's get started. So guys, we gonna begin with the first cause that cause a dead motherboard. Of course, we gonna see some live testing using the multimeter and we gonna pass through many motherboards in order to understand everything so the first common fault is the power jack do you see guys this is basically type c power jack for this motherboard sometimes you can find this power jack for other motherboards sometimes this kind of power jack the big power jack so what is the most important here guys for the power jack is to check the path do you see here those paths if we have a dry hair for this one also, okay, if we have a dry in this part, the 19 volt will not pass to the motherboard, then you will get a dead board. Also guys, don't neglect this kind of jack because sometimes you can find just a flexible cable and this kind of jack. Also here, you have to check this pins over here check if you have a dry hair or not so this is the first cause that cause a dead motherboard and many technicians don't pay attention to this easy failure of course for some motherboard as you can see if you check here for example for this motherboard we have 19 volt this is good in this pin also we have 19 volt so this is basically a good motherboard okay but if there is a dry hair guys if there is a dry over here, even if you find hair 19 volt in these two pins, because here basically we have a red wire, as you can see, we have red wires, means this two pin hold 19 volt. So even if this is the problem that some technicians are made, you check here, you find, for example, 19 volt. volt. But if there is a dry hair, the 19 volt will not pass to the motherboard. So how can we check if the 19 volt pass to the to the motherboard or not? By looking to inductors or current sense resistor, like, th like this one, for example. If we check it, we have 19 volt. Do you see, guys? May 19 volt pass from the power jack. To the board to the motherboard because here we have 19 volts but in some motherboards you can't find a 19 volt in the input but because we have a dry hair okay you will not find 19 volt in the current sense resistor means the voltage the b plus is not distributed in the board so please pay attention for this motherboard guys for example we have the power jack we have here two inductors so you can't find 19 volt here but if there is a problem a dry problem it will not pass to the board so always check these two inductors here and also we have current sense resistor over here so the current sense resistor is the bridge between the charge circuit and the rest circuits in the board so always even if you find guys 19 volt here, please check inductors or current sense resistor. As you can see, for all motherboards, you will find current sense resistor. For this board, for example, guys, that contain just this kind of jack, integrated jack. If we go to the back, as you can see, we have the big inductor here and we have the current sense resistor R010. This is the current sense resistor. So, here you have to find 19 volt so from this point 19 volt will be distributed to all circuits in the motherboard and the proof guys do you see here we have these dots means 19 volt is distributed to nine circuits to 3.3 volt circuit ram circuit cpu circuit to chipset circuits 1.8 volt circuit bio circuit to do sio to the peripheral etc okay guys so here always remember the current sense resistor are very important if you want to master troubleshooting and to isolate failure very fast and in some motherboards guys you can find protection component like for example for this motherboard we have diode this is a protection diode as you can see 
near to the power jack over here guys we have the power jack do you see we have a flexible cable with the power jack over here and we have a protection diode so for this diode you can just test it using the multimeter you can just for it let's test it let's test this diode so please pay attention this is not a tantalum capacitor it's like tantalum capacitor but this is a diode how we know we have the reference here pd as you can see guys that's why mastery references is very important i have a video that i upload to my channel about references very important because sometimes you can find some component that are the same same form same color same size etc so we use references to distinguish between that component so to make things simple for beginners you say guys between this component and this component this is a tantalum capacitor and here we have diode we have pd for diode and we have here pc do you see here guys pc for tantalum capacitor even we have the same line as you can see the same thing but this is capacitor this is diode so if you didn't master references especially for beginners there is a beginner that can change a diode with a capacitor but no so guys please i invite you to watch the video about references in my channel just for you to know about how to differentiate between components now let's test this component to check if this diode is good or not you can test it using the continuity option or the diode option or just to check 19 volt here so let's try both options so guys we have a flexible cable we have the protection diode so let's put the multimeter to the continuity option so always guys locate the cathode we have cathode over here we have this white mark or this line or bar here means this is the cathode so we're gonna put the black probe in the cathode and we have the positive terminal or the anode let's check we have 600 drop voltage this is good so if i swap the probes just to be sure we have one sometimes you can find 1000 because the diode is connected to the board so this is how we can check this protection diode or you can just connect the adapter like this we connect the adapter okay guys and check 19 volt where in the cathode here because the anode is connected to the ground Do you see this wide area means ground so again guys let's move on the multimeter to 20 volts here we have 20 volts so of course for guys that have a digital multimeter you can you can just select auto range so we're gonna put the black the black probe in the ground everywhere in the ground and then do red probe this time not in on anode but in the cathode because the anode is connected to the ground here we have white area let's check we have 19 volt as you can see so 19 volt is good so this is a good protection diode of course sometimes guys you can find fuse in place of diode you can find a fuse okay so for protections we use diodes or fuses so what is the next step after checking the protection diode we have to go and check for mosfets or switches guys you see here we have this is the charge ic here we have the first switch the second switch so 19 volt will go to the first switch here if we check here we have 19 volt okay so this is as you can see we have this dot or a small hole here means this is the source and over here we have the gate let's check the gate we have 3.6 in the gates okay so the 19 volts will pass to this side why because the gate over here is activated as you can see 3.6 so here we have 19 volt good then as you can see these two switches are connected together here we have drain here we have drain we will find here 19 volt so here we have this point means this is the surge here we have the gate let's check also we have 1.6 as a control signal means we will find here 19 volt so 19 volt travel from the power jack passing through the, the protection diode and then goes to the first mosfet and there 
here in the other side and then to the second switch and then in this side so this is good these two mosfets are good sometimes guys you can find just one switch okay one switch not two but in some motherboards you can find two switches okay in this motherboard for example guys we have the power jack we have two inductors and we have two switches this motherboard also has two switches as you can see and then we have the current sense resistor for this motherboard guys for hp here we have the connector the integrated connector here we have the protection diode as you can see and here we have a switch this is basically a three terminal switch so for this board you have to pay attention to this pins here to the diode and to the switch so guys always the same working principle so i show you many motherboards in order to master and to understand 100 percent so we have connector this is the input connector okay after that we have two switches after that we have the current sense resistor guys and then as you can see we have the three volt five volt circuit why because we have here a duplicated channel this one and this one inductor mosfet resistor capacitor inductor mosfet resistor capacitor okay so for 3.3 volt and 5 volt you will find always duplicated so guys we gonna continue in the next part until we see all probable cause that can cause a dead motherboard i hope that you understand this part one please don't forget to like subscribe share and join me in my patreon page if you want to accelerate learning and of course take a look to my website all links in the description see you in part two